What's up everyone, this is Jake with Casual Commerce, and in this video we're going to be setting up a print-on-demand store from A to Z, so we're going to be essentially covering these four different sections in this video. So initially we're going to set up a store, and then I'm going to show you how you can go out there and find designs, and then I'm going to show you how you can put these designs on your products and put the products in your store. And then lastly, I'm going to give you some tips and show you how you can target people on Facebook with Facebook ads for these products. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And I'm gonna try and keep this video under an hour if possible. So if I start going a little bit fast, just um, you know, go back. All right, so here we are on Shopify here. So if you click the first link in the description, you'll be taken to this page right here, or you can go ahead and start your free trial. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my email and then start free trial and then we can just put in a password here and then we can put in a store name so, so i'll just put in demo print on demand store create and then we have to wait a second here for this to go ahead and load in <laughs> go ahead and click these and then we have to put in our info here so I'm going to put in my info and just go ahead and skip ahead so after you put in your info you just go ahead and hit enter my store and then we are already in here so there's a lot of things that go into setting up a store and since this video is going to be more based on the print on demand aspect I'm not going to get into every nitty-gritty detail with store setup we're just going to go over the basics here so the first thing you can do is normally you're going to want to go ahead and select your plan. So I would recommend just the basic. You don't really need any more than that. Um, if you start doing a lot of revenue down the line, you can upgrade just for the cheaper credit card transaction fees. But I would just go ahead and choose the basic plan. And then from there, um, we're going to go to online store and we're going to select a theme. So I really like debut for... Um, single product drop shipping stores, but in this case, I'm going to go to explore free themes and for the sake of this tutorial I'm just going to use simple or go in to keep the theme and everything as simple as possible So there's two styles light and beauty and I'm just going to go with light We're going to keep it simple and clean and then I'm going to add theme right here And then right now it is going ahead and installing the theme so I just need to wait a second And now the theme is installed, so now I'm going to go here to Actions, and then Publish the Simple Theme, and then Publish. And now the theme has went ahead and published itself. So, like I said, like I said there's a lot of things that go in the store setup, so I'm going to be covering the very basics um, in this video just to go ahead and get you up and running so we're going to be covering the basic pages that you need to set up and then we're going to be covering uh, getting a logo so first thing we're going to do is head over to pages and we're going to go ahead and add some pages to our store that every store is going to need so we're going to click add page and the first one we're going to add is a contact and then all you have to do is title it contact and come here to template, click page.contact, and then hit save, and you're good to go. And then we're going to create another page, and we're going to name it About Us. And then right here, you would just type in your brand story. So this is, you know, this is where you put your brand story. For the sake of the video, like I said, I don't want it to be super long, so I'm not going to actually type in this here, but obviously you can pause the video and then go ahead and type in uh, your about page, or you can come back and do it later, and I'm going to click save, and then I'm going to create another page, and title this frequently asked questions, so this is where you'd put like common shipping concerns and questions, so like shipping times. Um, things like that or uh, you, you can put in like your return policy uh, your refund policy and so on and so forth and like where do you ship and everything 
So like I said, if you want to go ahead and fill that at, out now, you can pause the video and do that. Or if you don't want to do that now, that's fine. We can just keep moving forward. And we're going to go ahead and create um, two more pages. So this next one's going to be Terms of Service. And in order to get the content for this, we're actually going to come over here to Settings. And then we're going to right click it and then open it in a new tab. And then we're going to click on this legal section right here. So we're going to open that up and we're going to go ahead and generate a privacy policy and a terms of service. So we're going to create this and then copy it and then come over to terms of service and paste it in and hit save. And then we're going to create another page and this is going to be the privacy policy. So we're going to come back over here and then create the privacy policy from a template again. We're going to copy it and then go ahead and paste it in and then hit save and we are good to go. So at this point we've already got the necessary pages that every store needs to have. So that was quick and easy. So now we're going to click on navigation down here just to quickly set up our menu. So first we're going to click footer menu. And we're going to add menu item. And then we're going to click down here on link, pages. And we're going to add the privacy policy to the footer. So click add, add menu item, pages, terms of service, add menu item, pages, FAQ. I'll put the FAQ up here. And then we'll hit save. So that's our footer menu. Then we'll hit navigation here to go back. And if I'm going fast, I apologize, but there's a lot that we need to cover in this video. So I kind of want to blaze through the store setup part since I know that uh, the majority of people just want to see the print on demand stuff, but I do want to cover this as well. So now we're going to go to navigation main menu and we're just going to add our about us and our contact us to the main menu. So once we've added those, we'll hit save, and then we are good to go. So now we have our basic uh, pages set up, and we have them put in the navigation, which is good. So we can close out this other tab we have here. And then now we're going to go to settings and just go into do some basic settings in here. So first, we can go to general. So right here, your store name. So this is where you can uh, put your store name. So the store name you signed up with in the beginning, it doesn't really matter because you can go back and change it. The only thing that will affect is your base, myshopify.com URL. However, you'll be buying your own domain name anyway, so this URL really doesn't matter. So right here, we have the account email. So this is can be like your personal email or whatever email you want uh, Shopify to contact you with, the order notifications and stuff. And then here's the customer email. So this would be like support at yourdomain.com. So once you go ahead and buy a domain, you can set up your support email like this. So that would be your customer email. So that's all you really need to change in here. So you would just hit save and go back. Now we can go into payment providers. So by default, whatever email you sign up with now will be set up with PayPal Express checkout. So whenever you generate a sale through PayPal, um, you'll be able to create an account with that email. If you already have a PayPal account, um, make sure to, that you signed up with the email associated with your PayPal account. If not, you can come in here, edit it, and then you can deactivate it and then just reactivate it with the correct email. So if you signed up with a different email, it's not a big deal. So for Shopify payments, this is the other one we need to activate. So we just hit complete account setup and you just fill out this information here. So you would fill out um, your address, your name, uh, what you sell, and then go ahead and fill out all of this information here. So that's all pretty self-explanatory. And then that's all we need to do in payment providers right there. And then as far as all of the settings go, the last thing you would need to do is edit your shipping, but you would come back and do this later once you figure out the shipping costs from the print on demand app you're using. So with that said, at this point, we have all of our main housekeeping and stuff set up with the store itself so now we're going to go ahead and create a logo real quick 
So if you want to get a free logo, you can go over here to hatchful.shopify.com and you'll be taken to this page and you just click get started. So depending on what niche you're trying to sell things in, you can get a logo. So I'm just going to run you through really quick how you can use this software. So you can just click fashion and then you can click the type of logo you want. So we can go with like elegant. And then we can type in our business name here. And then you can type in a slogan, but most of the time you don't need one. And then online store website. And then there's a lot of times, and then it'll show up with a bunch of demo logos here. So you can just kind of select one, any of them really, we'll just select one immediately just to kind of get it. And then once you select one, you can come in here to the business name. And I don't know why it shortened it, but you can put it back here. And you can change the fonts, the colors, and everything, the color scheme. Now, since this is a free software, you don't have you know too much control so it's not like you're gonna have a extremely amazing logo from this but it is something you can just use quickly uh, and for free to get your store up and running and if you want a really good logo I would recommend heading over to fiverr.com so f-i-v-e-r-r.com and then you can go ahead and just go to graphics and design and click logo design and grab a gig off here so we'll be actually hopping over to fiverr later when it comes to t-shirt designs so once you have your logo you can just hit next here and then download the logo but i'm not actually going to do that for the video so what you would do next once we have our logo we would come back to themes and then just click customize and we would just go to header and then logo image right here this is where you would put your logo in so I'll just go ahead and put in a logo that I have. I'll upload an image. So I'll just go ahead and put in uh, the Casual Commerce logo, and you can see that's where your logo would go ahead and show up. So pretty simple. So now at this point, we've already set up our basic pages, and we have our logo set up. So now our store is a skeleton, and don't forget to hit save. So our, our store is a skeleton, but at least it's looking somewhat presentable now, and uh, we are ready to move on. So like I said, there's more things that you can do when it comes to store setup and store design, but I want to keep that pretty short in this video because I want this video to predominantly cover the print-on-demand aspect. So with that said, now we're going to move on to the second part, which is finding designs site we're going to look at is Pinterest here. So what you want to do is go ahead and just look up your niche, look up designs within the niche. So if you want to sell um, designs related to dogs or, or cats or, you know, maybe entrepreneurship designs or pretty much anything, you know, like, I mean, you can go into like selling, you know, like cow designs, to people that are, that are interested in cows, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do. And I will say that if you can figure out a way to tie two niches together. Um, that's gonna make your Facebook targeting really hyper-targeted. So say you were able to target someone that is interested in cats and coffee, um, you're gonna have a really hyper-targeted audience that uh, like the design itself is going to really relate to that person. So let's say, um, for example, you have just like a cat t-shirt and you're targeting people interested in cats. Um, obviously that's going to relate to them on an emotional level, but let's say you have a cat t-shirt that has to do with coffee as well, and you target someone that's interested in cats and coffee, then that's going to really relate to them on an emotional level because it's not just one of their passions or, you know, really big interests, it's two of them. So if you can kind of tie those together, then that's going to be really good. So when you're looking for designs, if you go ahead and find designs, that kind of tie more than one interest together, that's definitely a good one to go for. So we're just going to go ahead and look up an example here on Pinterest. So let's just type in coffee t-shirt. And you don't just have to look up um, shirts, FYI. You can look up pretty much anything because with print on demand, you can go ahead and not only just sell shirts, but you can sell like bags, um, other types of apparel. You can sell wall art. There's a lot of different things you, that you can sell. So a lot of times if a design is doing well on a shirt, then it would probably do well on, let's say, wall art as well. So, um, And the thing is, it also allows you to reach different sectors 
of that audience because you know some people may not want you know let's say this shirt so like this shirt seems like a pretty good design here you know need coffee and it's a battery icon that's about to die so this would probably relate to a lot of people that are essentially really addicted to caffeine but some people may not like wearing shirts like this they might like wearing uh, you know, like the same brand of shirts, maybe they're really in the fashion, or maybe they like just wearing the same shirts because they're super comfortable, but that same person might buy the same design on a coffee mug, for example, in this scenario, or maybe in the example of like another niche, like maybe if you were selling designs that had motivational quotes and things like that on it, then, you know, they might not want to wear that on their shirt, but they may want to, you know, buy some wall art or, you know, a poster board with that on there. So there's a lot of different things you got to consider. So, you know, uh, I'll, I'll be using shirts throughout this example. Uh, I'll be using shirts throughout this video as the main example because that's what everyone thinks of most commonly when it comes to print on demand. But keep in mind that you can use designs pretty much on anything so you don't have to look up shirts only. So what you can do is just keep browsing through here and looking for designs and then seeing how many um, comments each one has. You can see this one doesn't really have too much um, reactions or anything like that. We can come down here and these are definitely kind of unrelated in other niches but you can see that there's a lot of designs on here that you can look at. So let's say you were trying to sell something coffee related. You could take a design like this and then you could save this image and then you could come over to Fiverr and then type in t-shirt design and it's pretty simple on here you don't really need to go through too much of a vetting process just pick one of the top rated gigs that has uh, you know pretty high feedback like above 4.8 and you can go ahead and open it up and then you can just go ahead and buy it right here for 10 bucks and then what you would do is you would send them the save design and then you would say, hey, can you recreate this design? Uh, if you have an idea in your head, then you can go ahead and tell them, hey, can you recreate it in this specific manner? Um, sometimes uh, you won't have an idea, so you can just you know, hope that they can go ahead and recreate it themselves. But a lot of the time you'll have an idea in your head like, hmm, well, maybe we can recreate it with a different font or maybe I can make it better this way or it'd be you know, funnier and more appealing by adding so-and-so to it. So what you can do is go ahead and tell them the idea that you have, and then they can go ahead and recreate the design. Now, like I said, you can always create unique designs if you want, but if you're not super creative, then you're probably gonna wanna go with um, using other designs as, as inspiration and then kind of recreating it. Another thing you can do is you can go ahead and recreate designs from one niche into another. So let's say, for example, you really like this design. Um, you don't have to recreate it for the coffee uh, niche specifically. You could recreate it for people that really like tea or that really like anything else that, you know, could be caffeine or maybe um, you could do it with like beer or something. Like there's a lot of different ways that you can do. So if you get really creative, you can take inspiration from designs in one niche and then go ahead and transfer that um, design to another niche as well. So that's another thing that you can do. And you would do the same thing on Fiverr. You would tell them, um, you know, I want this to do a tea instead of coffee. So that's how you look on Pinterest. And essentially the process is always the same. You're just going to search coffee t-shirt, coffee design, whatever niche you want. Look for it on shirts, look for it on wall art or anything. And I'm going to give you a couple other sites that you can do that on as well. So Etsy is another one. So we could type in something like nurse t-shirt. And then we can go ahead and get design inspiration from here. So you can see there's a lot of ones on here and certain ones have a lot of, uh, you can look at the ones that have high feedback score and that's probably a good one to go ahead and recreate. So like I said, this is pretty self-explanatory as well. You just have to spend a lot of time looking up different niches and then maybe you can go ahead and transfer certain designs from one niche to another. So Etsy is another really good site to go ahead and use. Uh, eBay is another one you can use, so if you go here, we can search and you can see that there's other um, different designs in here we can use as inspiration as well. And another site you can use that 
I would like to show you, but for some reason it's down for maintenance during the exact time I decided to film this video is Teespring. So Teespring is probably actually the best site to go for um, inspiration because it's other people selling uh, print-on-demand products. So if a print-on-demand product is doing well for someone else, most likely you can put your own spin on it and it'll do well for you. So normally you would just do the same thing and you would come in here and search. So I'll just pick one of these, but right now you'll see that the site is down for maintenance. So hopefully when you're watching the video, the site isn't down for maintenance and you can go ahead and browse through here. So that said, once we have our designs, so at this point we've brainstormed, we've came up with a few design ideas and we've went ahead and got someone on Fiverr to redesign our ideas for us. At this point now, we just need to go ahead and actually put the designs on our products and then upload them to our stores. So for this, we're going to use the Printify app. So if you click the second link in the description, you'll be taken to this page right here. And then we just need to click start selling. So then we just need to sign up. So I'll just go ahead and sign up here. And we can just fill out this information here. Go down here to manage stores. And then we're going to click on connect. And then right here, we're going to connect this with our Shopify store. So we're going to click connect here. And then we need to put in our My Shopify URL. So if you've already bought a domain, uh, you're not going to put in that. URL you need to put in the my Shopify URL so we're going to come up to our store I'm going to take this URL right here so demo here the store my Shopify.com we don't need um, the HTTPS and we don't need anything after this we just need this bit of the URL right there so we're going to copy that come in here paste it in click continue And then we're just going to click install. So now that it's installed, you can see that we can access Printify right in here in our Shopify um, dashboard. So one thing I would recommend is in the beginning, Printify is completely free, but once you start making sales, um, I would recommend going to a premium account, which is 29 a month, because you're going to get a 20% discount on all the products. So if you're selling more than 10 products a month, then you're actually going to be saving money um, by going to the premium account. So uh, definitely remember to do that once you're selling more than 10 products a month. So at this point, what we need to do real quickly is click on this, and then we're going to click on payments. And this is where you would go ahead and set up where your payments are going to come from so when you order the products from them when you make a sale you're gonna to have to pay for the product to go ahead and be printed so we can go ahead and add balance from paypal or we can set up a credit or debit card so pretty self-explanatory there and from here what we need to do is go to product catalog because now we're going to go ahead and add one so you can see that they have a lot of products here uh, t-shirts hoodies bunch of other shirts, shoes, and then all the women's stuff, more shoes, swimwear, stuff for babies, accessories like bags. You can see there's a lot of different options, jewelry, um, hats, socks. There's the wall art I was talking about. There's the shower curtains. There's a ton of different options we can choose from. So whatever you're specifically trying to sell, um, they have a lot of options, so you'll be good to go. In this case, um, for the example, I'm just going to use the shirt. So I'm going to just click the first shirt here just to show you how to use the app and everything. So what we're going to do is scroll down here and then we can see print providers. So we can see uh, the price from the different print providers and then we can see the shipping cost. We can see the sizes they have. We can see the printing area and then we can see the average production time. So normally you're just going to want to choose the one that is the best um, price 
as long as it fits the other requirements you want. So I'd be looking at price and then production time as well. You don't want a production time that's really high. Uh, obviously, you want orders to be filled quickly. So in this example, we will just use the first provider right here because this is a pretty quick production time. They have a good amount of sizes and the cost is pretty low. So what we're going to do is click start designing. So now at this point, what we can do is you can see here, we can edit the print area. So there's the front and then there's the back. So we can put a design on the front or the back or both. To keep it simple, we're just gonna put a design on the front. So now you can see that we can click here to add your design. So once your uh, designer on Fiverr sent you the design, you would just click add and then we can new upload. Upload from a device. So in this example, I'm just gonna upload the Casually Commerce logo again, then click select. And you can see that right here, we've got the logo here centered in the middle of the shirt. So we can rotate it if we want. But we'll just keep that centered. We can scale it so we can make it tiny. We can make it huge. It's all pretty easy to edit. And I'm pretty sure I messed this up by not making it dead center. And then we can scroll down a little bit here to edit the positioning. And you can see here that this is going to show our resolution and you don't want this to say low. So if your resolution is low, you may need to scale it a little bit smaller and you can solve this issue easily by um, having your designer give you the high quality vector files that will scale infinitely. In this case, this logo isn't really a super high quality file. So that's why um, it's having resolution issues, but when you order your designs, you shouldn't have these same issues as well. But you can see right here, it'll say good resolution, average, or low. So you're going to at least want it in the average section. But like I said, you shouldn't run into this issue. So next, we are going to click on variance and cost right here. And we can see that we have a ton of variance here. So we can choose what sizes we want to offer. So normally you're just gonna offer all the sizes and then we can choose what colors. So normally you're not going to offer all the colors. So you're only going to offer colors that you think looks good with the design. So sometimes uh, your designs are gonna look better on certain colors than others. So you can come in here and uncheck certain ones. So I'll go ahead and uncheck all of them except white because that looks best in this example. So now you can see, I don't know why. Uh, yeah. So in white, I guess they don't have the 4XL. So sometimes that's going to happen. Certain colors won't be available in certain sizes. So we can see now we have seven variants right here. And if we look at the pricing table, you can see these are the cost of all of the different colors and different sizes and the sizing table will show the sizes for this specific shirt. So then we can go ahead and click save. And then we can come here to next to proceed to the product description. And here, this is where we can pick our different photos. So we have the front, we have the back, and then we can click continue. And then we can name our shirt here. So we could just name it And then right here, we have our description right here, which I'll just leave as default, but you can type in, I would recommend typing in some type of little short description about your product. And then we can also add the size table to the description, which is nice, which is a good thing about the Printify app, which is easy because a lot of times when people are buying um, different types of clothing and stuff, you know, they want to know um, well, how big is a small with this specific type of shirt? Because a lot of times sizing varies depending on brand. So this is definitely something that can help raise conversions and ease uh, and make the checkout process easier for your customer. So we can add the size table to the description and we can choose whether it's on the Imperial or the metric system. And then we can add our tags in here as well. And then we can come down here to continue. 
and then we can edit our prices here so as you can see they put in a default retail price and it shows what our profit is here so for a shirt uh, I mean 1648 is kind of a random number so you would want like a clean number so we'll go with like 1799 and you can see some of the larger variants cost a little bit more money so sometimes you can come in and just raise the price of that by a dollar to compensate and then we can click continue and like I said uh, we already covered the resolution issue earlier um, when you're getting high quality designs you shouldn't run into that and then we just click this box right here and that publishes it to our store or we can hide it in our store if we don't want it to be live yet but I'm gonna click save changes and publish and we're going to wait for it to publish now and then we'll go ahead and take a look all right so now you can see that it's published so i'm going to click c in store and you can see here is our product right here so it's looking pretty good so at this point the product is ready to be purchased so as soon as somebody goes ahead and buys your product um, printify is going to automatically fulfill the order so at this point all you need to do is send traffic to your products all the order fulfillment is going to be completely automated so with that said i'm going to show you how you can quickly create a facebook ad so now we're going to jump over to facebook ads manager so here i'm on my personal account which i never really use so it should look just like your fresh account if you've never used one before i'm going to come in and click create and now we need to go ahead and pick a marketing objective so in this case we are going to click conversions and then we are going to name this I like to name it um, whatever I'm selling so we can just go casually commerce shirt and we can click continue and then right here I'm going to show you a couple different things you can do with targeting so I don't have a Facebook pixel set up on this demo store that we just created here so that's something that you would definitely need to do actually i can show you how to do that really quickly right now so if we click on ads manager come over here to all tools we'll click pixels and open that right click open in a new tab and then you can see that i already have a facebook pixel on this personal account but if you don't you can just click create pixel right in here and then once you've created it, you're just going to take your pixel ID and then copy it and then come back over to the store and then come down here to online store and click preferences and come right here to Facebook pixel, control V, paste it in, and then you are good to go. So I probably should have shown that earlier in the video, but it's okay. It's a pretty easy process to do. So back to the ad itself. So I'm going to show you different examples of what targeting and stuff would look like. So for the website um, conversion we would just select purchase you can start out with view content if you want or you can start out with add the cart but in this case we're going to start out with purchase and then if we scroll down here so we can start out by targeting people in the United States and then we can check our age right here so if you're selling something a design that you think would only apply to younger people then you know you can change the age to maybe like 18 to 35 or the gender down here if you're selling something that would only apply to men or something that would only apply to women obviously select the corresponding gender and then down here is the detailed targeting so this is where um, we can get interesting so what we can do is target people based on their interests so this is where we go back to what I was talking about earlier where I was saying if there's somebody that uh, if you have a design that click that hits on multiple interest points it's going to be easy to make a hyper targeted audience now with print on demand products we want our audience to be really niche and pretty small which is a lot different from drop shipping products where i like big audiences with print on demand we're going to want tiny niche super passionate audiences so for an example let's say that we are targeting cats so we're selling a cat design so we're targeting people that are interested in cats so obviously one of the first things you can do is just type in cats and you can see that the cat interest here 
is relatively big. So 60 million people in the United States are interested in cats. But the thing is, that's way too broad for print on demand. So with print on demand, we're going to want an audience between around 100,000 and 500,000. So we need to narrow this down by a lot. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that. So I'm going to bring up a notepad here just so that way we can keep track of it and maybe you can write these down or type these in whatever you need to do. So depending on the niche that you're targeting, there's a lot of different sectors of that niche that you can narrow it down by. So when we think about cats, we can narrow it down. We can target by types of cats. We can target by, you know, um, cat organizations. So maybe um, like cat shelters or, you know, you know, like pet shelters that save cats. We can target by cat food brands or any other type. It doesn't have to just be cat food. We can target by like cat magazines. Just think of anything that has to do with the specific niche, and we can go ahead and target based off of that niche sector. So we can target based off of, um, this might not apply to the cat niche, but let's think of like the fitness niche. So we could target like celebrities. So think of like there might be big influencers within whatever niche you're targeting. So you can target based off those influencers. There's a lot of different things that you can go ahead and target based off of. So what we're gonna be doing is setting up a few different ad sets targeting all of these different types. So we'd have one ad set narrowed down where we try just interest where we target by the type of cat and like the cat breed. And then we could type in uh, target by the organizations. We could narrow by the cat food brands. We can narrow by cat magazines and uh, narrow by celebrities. And like I said, different niches are gonna have different subsectors. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Google and we're gonna type in cat food brands. All right, so we can see Purina here is one of the first ones. So what I'm gonna do is click narrow audience and type in Purina. You can see Nestle Purina Pet Care. So this looks like the interest right here. And now we can see we've already lowered our interest to 1 million people, so people that like cats and then people that like this specific brand. All right, so at this point, we'd probably want to go ahead and narrow this further by either another brand or we can narrow it by um, one other thing, which I'm going to show you right now. So we can click narrow further and then we can type in engage shoppers. So this will narrow it by people that are consistently engaging with uh, product related ads on Facebook. So we can click on that, and now we can see our audience has been narrowed down to 710,000, which is a little on the large end, but it is something that we can go ahead and move forward with testing. So this could be one ad set audience right here. So now let's go ahead and create one more just as an example. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these here. So we're gonna stick with the broad cat interest. But now in this case, we're gonna go ahead and narrow it down by something else. So now we're gonna narrow it down by types of cats. So we're going to see right here that there's a bunch of different types of cats. So we're gonna go ahead and we can see there's different cats in here. And we're going to see if there's any interest regarding these different types of cats. So let's see, Abyssinian, so let's see if that's one. Yep, so we can see Abyssinian cat right here. We can click it. And you can see that made our audience extremely small. So now instead of narrowing it again, we're going to add in a couple different ones. So what I'm gonna do is click Suggestions. And now you can see that it's suggesting a bunch of different interests that have to do with this specific cat. So we can go ahead and click Siamese. And now you can see that immediately skyrocketed our audience up to 8.5 million people. So you can see a lot more people are interested in Siamese cats than the Abyssinian cat. I'm probably butchering the name. So what we can do is now, so now after seeing this, I would see that this audience is definitely too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the abyss cat and I'm going to look at these suggestions again and we can see the size of the audience over here so I'm going to try and find one with a 
reasonable size. Let's see. We'll try and do this. So what I'm going to do is now we're going to come down to the narrow section again. So Siamese. So now we're going to what was the one we just saw? Persian. So now we're going to narrow it by Persian. So now we can see that that brought our audience down to 5.3 million people. So it's getting smaller. So now this is people that like cats, that like Siamese cats and like Persian cats. So at this point, we just want to keep looking for different cat breeds until we can narrow this down to an audience at least under 1 million. And you can always narrow your audience down by engaged shoppers at the end. Now at this point, we're going to go ahead and move on to the ad itself. So I would recommend testing at least 5 to 10 different ad sets. Um, testing different sectors of the audience. Depending on the niche, there might be more sectors than others. So one more thing I wanna show you really quickly is how you could do the hyper-targeting method. So let's say um, we had a shirt that was cat related and coffee related. So we could target someone interested in cats and then target someone that's interested in coffee as well. So now everyone on this list likes cats and coffee. You can see that this is a really huge audience. So if we wanted to hyper target these two separate niches, but make it to where they're a lot more, to where it's a more targeted audience, a smaller audience, instead of doing the broad things. So what we could do is narrow this down further by the interest we were using earlier. So we can narrow it further by like Siamese cat. And then we can narrow it one more time by like Starbucks. So now we know people in this audience really like coffee and they really like cats because they're interested in two things that have to do with cats and two things that have to do with coffee. So that said, that's how you can kind of cross target niches. And that's why if you find designs that have to do with two different niches, it's really powerful. So lastly, we're going to come down here and we can go down the daily budget. Now, depending on your budget, um, how much you have to spend on ads, um, that's going to determine your daily budget. Um, you can go with $5 a day if you're going to test uh, 5 to 10 different ad sets. Uh, $10, $15 a day makes the testing process go a little quicker. Your budget really only impacts um, how quickly you're going to get data. So if you don't have a large budget, just run uh, $5 a day on 10 different ad sets. So it'll end up being uh, $50 a day. But after two days of running that test, you should have sufficient data back to know whether the design is going to do well or not. Then we can come down here, click continue. And now at this point, we can go ahead and, and select the image or video. So what I would recommend with this is you don't just want to use the stock image right here. So you don't just want to put this in the ad. So what you would want to do is go ahead over to Fiverr again, and you can type in something like T-shirt model. And what you can do is you can have someone here that will say they will design the t-shirt mock-up on a real model so they can take your design and put it on a real model you can see that there's a lot of different gigs for that as well and if you're doing something different like a bag or wall art um, you can go ahead and uh, possibly order the product uh, yourself and take your own pictures or you can do something right here we'll type in product demo so this is another thing you can do. You can send your product um, to one of these people that will actually demo the product for you and they can either take pictures with it or they can you know, make a video with it. And this is the type of stuff that you're gonna need for Facebook ads nowadays. You know, you're not gonna be able to run an ad with something like you know, this generic um, stock photo and have it work. At the very least, you're gonna need the t-shirt mock-up, but a step up from that would be to have someone make a video uh, with demonstrating your product. Even if it's something like a gift, that's going to be a lot more efficient. And this is something you can do yourself as well. If you just want to order you know, your own shirt or your own bag, your own wall art, you can go ahead and create a video, a quick little like two, three second video of, of you, know, you in the product or you know, someone else in the product, whatever. So the point is you want to go ahead and actually have real examples of the product. You don't want to use the stock imagery. So it's pretty easy to go ahead and set that up as well. And then you would just go ahead and upload your images or your video here. So in this case, just for the sake of the example, um, we're gonna be uploading the terrible stock um, photo here just to show you what the ad would look like. But this is where you would go ahead and put in your mock-up that you got from Fiverr or you would put in your little video. 
And then you could come down here and this is where you would put in your product URL. So you would copy your product URL, paste it in, and you write your headline. So just your headline would just be what it is. And then text could be just the one line, just the catchy one liner type thing. So like in this case, e-commerce entrepreneurs are loving this. I probably spelled that wrong, I did. And one thing you can do to make your ads a little more appealing is go to Emojipedia. So just Google Emojipedia and then you can put emojis in your ads here. So I'll put the smiling face with hearts, copy it, come in here and we can put it at the beginning and at the end. And you can see that adds a little more spice to our ad there. Actually, I don't like how that's cut down like that. So I'm gonna take the first one out. So we can see it's pretty much that simple to set up the ad and it would look a lot better if you had your, the mock-up that I recommended you getting as well or the short little video of the product. And then you would switch this over to shop now. You'd have your conversion pixel track and set up and then you can just click confirm. And like I said, I would recommend go ahead and set it up uh, five to 10 different test ad sets, testing out the different sectors within your markets. So that way you can fully determine whether or not the design um, is going to work well in that sector. So with that said, that's going to be it for this video. I know it was a lot to take in. I tried to condense it and keep it as short as possible, but I'm pretty sure it still dragged it on pretty long. With that said, that's going to be it for this video. If you found that helpful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more content. Comment below if you have any questions or let me know what you think. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.